I've got to say, I've lived a very privileged life. Um, although I was born to Jamaican immigrants in the United States, it wasn't your typical come to America and struggle hard story. My parents did work hard, but they were professionals. They were both physicians. Um, they weren't, um, you know, working three jobs and scrubbing toilets like a lot of the immigrant stories you hear. I lived in upper middle class neighborhoods most of my life. My parents drove nice cars. Or I guess we were probably envied a little bit in high school as being some of the um, privileged kids, even though we had to fight with racism the same way. Um, when I went to high school in Florida, it was the 80s. Um, and to give you a perspective of time, at 54, I'm further removed from my high school experience than my high school experience was removed for Jim Crow laws in the South. Jim Crow laws in the South were more recent and more current when I was going to high school than my current high school memories are at this age. So you can imagine, you know, racism was real in, 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 in Central Florida at the time, and we had to deal with all kinds of racism. However, um, like most immigrants, we had the security and the, I don't know, the, the strength of our community and our history and you know, the, the knowledge of who we are as a Jamaican people. And we didn't really feel as helpless and as displaced. We, we, I always felt very comfortable and comfortable and strong as a kid growing up. Um, to the point where, you know, instead of choosing the doctor, lawyer, Indian chief route, you know, to choose an artist route as a, as a kid, to, uh, to choose a career that is an art career is a pretty bold decision. You know, it's not as secure as the traditional roles. My parents were surely not happy about it. They wanted me to be a, a doctor and, and to do the traditional thing uh, to the point where I applied and was accepted to one of the finest photography um, schools in the States at the time, Art Center College of Design in Pasadena, California. Um, a place where a lot of the photographers where I end up working for as an apprentice went to school. Um, my parents were so adamant they wanted me to, to be a physician that they didn't help me. Um, they wouldn't pay for my tuition at this very fine tertiary school. And I wasn't, I probably was a little bit, um, not probably, I was a privileged kid, so I didn't know the roots that kids that are born to privilege had to do to take to get themselves to school. I, if I'd known, I probably would have gotten a grant and you know done it by myself. But I decided instead that I would just uh, forego the education and try and learn more about photography through the apprentice system. It wasn't a system. I just went to New York and started working with top commercial photographers in New York and learned a lot. Um, worked for some of the top hitters who are still top hitters today and um, kind of I have the bittersweet satisfaction of knowing I'm a little bit more self-made than guys who got to go to the fancy schools. But at the same time, I kind of regret it. And um, my parents could have done it easily. My sister went to Harvard, <laughs> no scholarship. So, you know, they could have afforded to put me through school, but I did it on my own. When I left high school, I decided that the best place for me to pursue my photographic dreams. I actually skipped a part, but that's okay. I, um, I went to New York and decided to be an apprentice to photographers to learn about, um, to learn about the business. And I did pretty well. I enjoyed it. But after a while, a lot of photographers that I worked for suggested that I was progressed enough to go on my own. Also, the, um, the birth of my son really kicked my ass and made me realize I couldn't be an assistant any longer. I had to try and build a career for myself. Um, so I started to work for a lot of magazines before advertising, um, which is a kind of a rite of passage for a lot of young photographers in New York. So in addition to um, some of the mainstream magazines like Time and Harper's Bazaar and um, oh, I can't remember it. Jesus, so long ago. And there's a lot of mainstream white publications, but I, I eventually found a niche um, working with a lot, some more of the, the black magazines, Essence Magazine, um, Source Magazine, Vibe. Um, but Source 
and I had a kind of a really good relationship that went on for a number of years. I, I worked with um, the late, great Chi Mo Du was a photo editor at the time. He was a photo editor who was a photographer as well. So he, he naturally gave himself a lot of the chief, <laughs> the, the choices assignments. <laughs> but, you know, we got a lot of work too. Um, I worked with, um, geez, uh, a lot of the Wu-Tang members. Um, um, geez, what? Nas, I shot a cover with Nas. Um, I shot Snoop Dogg, but that wasn't with Source. That was for um, Stuff Magazine, another, um, um, geez, the Clips. Teddy Riley, um, uh, Keith, Keith Murray, um, a lot of hip-hop artists that were banging at the time. Uh, I also had, it's funny, New York is a place where they tend to, what they say, pigeonhole you. Once you start shooting a certain genre, people tend to keep in that genre. I, I was working a lot in the music industry, so... I started to get a lot more work in the music industry. Because I'm a Jamaican, it was very important for me, well, uh, American of Jamaican descent, um, <clears throat> it was very important to me to um, represent Jamaica. Um, and I had a little bit of the arrogance of youth. Um, at the time, I would have told you that there, there was inadequate um, coverage of Jamaican artists and that I had to upgrade upgrade what was being done in, in reggae music and you know that's a, that's a little arrogant when you consider that there's a great history of many many photographers who have done a lot of work before I even knew that there was a camera um, however I do I can say that I was for sure um, over the last couple of decades definitely one of the most prolific reggae photographers dancehall photographers um, from way back with Petra on Sony Records or Ziggy Marley and them um, on Elektra. Um, decades of work for, for VP Records and Green Sleeves, plus a lot of editorial. I, I'm sure I've done a uh, hundred dance hall and record artists, whether it be editorially or album covers, surely, surely over a hundred. Um, I used I used to play a game. I used to say. Um, Give me a list of your favorite, your top ten regular artists, and I bet I've shot seven of them. Eh, maybe it's not seven anymore. Maybe it's more like six or five, but definitely um, try to keep abreast of the new generation too. Um, there's a lot of new artists out there that um, I've not worked with. Um, specifically, Idonia. I'm ready. I'm, cutting, I'm coming for Idonia. <laughs> um, a couple of artists, but definitely, I'm still still representing. I mean, Stock Ashley. Um, Skang Dog, you know, a lot of the more current artists, I'm still trying to connect with them and um, love it. I love it. Coffee, um, Chronix is one of my favorite artists. Chronix is my artist. My, of, of the recent artists, that's my artist. I knew him since he was like 17 years old. I've been shooting him every couple of years since. And we just have a good connection. Um, the whole Shakula camp, I was shooting Shakula them when they were banging and now I'm shooting Shakula's kids for them. So it's, it's, it's a nice journey. It's a beautiful ride. The thing about my career is that I really love photography. It, it's, it's something I'm very passionate about. Um, so it doesn't matter whether I'm working for a no-name artist or uh, a top fashion or entertainment magazine. It doesn't really matter to me. I'm very, very passionate about photography, so I love it. I love, I love the process of going on location and lighting it. I love the process of meeting people. I love the challenge. I love that little nervous energy before a big job and that little, that little feeling of adrenaline when you, you know you got this, but you're still, you're still kind of buzzing because there's a little, it's really important. And um, I, I've been doing this so long that it's in my nature to, to kind of, I'm a little competitive. Um, I'm definitely live by the creed, um, you're only as good as your last job. Um, I, I, I believe that there's no, when we would shoot uh, editorials for magazine covers, we would approach every shot was the cover shot. Every shot is the cover shot. And then 
and you choose your cover shot from there. It, it wasn't a matter of this is a cover shot and these other shots aren't as important. Every shot is your cover shot. And then what ends up being the cover shot is the cover shot. Likewise, an album cover shoot, you know, I don't like to think, okay, this one is a publicity shot and this one is the album cover. Everything, every shot is important. There's no unimportant shot. Every shot is, there's no B roll. Every, every roll is A roll. Every shot is important. Um, my job involves travel, in, involves change, involves a lot of different people. It rarely involves too much time in the office. So it, it's, it's stimulating and it's fun and it's exciting and you meet <clears throat> the highest of the high and the lowest of the low, heads of state or you know, drug dealers in the, in the barrio, you know, it doesn't really matter. Um, and my job is to make them all beautiful or make them something, make them threatening or make them exciting or make them sexy. You know, I, I, love, I love that. Um, every picture tells a story, you know, and you're using your lighting, you're using icons, you're using posing and suggestive body language to tell that story. I've had the opportunity to um, put my creative vision into a number of album covers. Um, well, probably the most notable one that I'm still very proud of to this day is a collaboration between the great Marlon James um, and myself and Sean Paul. Um, Dutty Rock um, is a triple platinum album and um, I've been working with Sean Paul for the last 20, 20 odd years. Not just Sean Paul, but the whole Dutty Cup crew. Um, we're brethren and friends going back from those times. Um, Dutty, Dutty Rock was, is definitely one of the first albums that I really felt I loved the album cover and it, I was really, really satisfied. Um, Beanie Man, another legend in the business. I've been working with Beanie many, many years as well. I'm honored to call him friend, just so I can call Sean friend. I, can, I have Beanie's number in my phone. I can call Beanie and say, what's up? Beanie knows my kids, my son, really. Um, I know his kids. Um, the album Blessed, I love that album cover. <laughs> it was the first time that, it was literally the first time that the, uh, the image that I loved most was chosen by the graphic people to put on the cover and I, I'm smiling because it, it didn't, I don't have a plaque for the album, I don't have the accolades, but in my heart that was one of the first albums that I felt like image after image that I gave them was just banging. Thank you, Beanie. Um, I've grown to really love uh, Free Like We Wanna Be. That is um, the album with Ziggy Marlin and Melody Makers. It was a disappointment to me because they didn't use hardly any of the stuff that I liked and I had to, to go with, with the choices of what the, the album cover, the, the record label decided. But it was a, it was a growing process for me because um, you know, as a young artist, you have to learn that your ego is not as important as the client. And sometimes what you love is not what the client loves. And you've got to suck down your little ego. And as long as the client is happy and has something that they're happy with, to, to, to let it go. And same thing with Patra. I, I, I didn't like the album choice, the, the image they chose for her Sony release, Scent of Attraction. And they took a black and white image and they painted the lips red, which I thought was extremely corny. I still do. <laughs> but, you know, it was a process of learning that, you know, if the client's happy, I'm happy. And yeah, and sometimes the client knows best. So, sometimes.